For a lot of people, millions of them, sports has been a welcome respite from the world of politics, but that's no longer true. Last year, NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick started kneeling during the national anthem, and he apparently launched a trend. This past weekend, Oakland Raiders running back Marshawn Lynch sat during the national anthem, as did Michael Bennett of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, ESPN's Max Kellerman, our old friend, complaining that white players won't join in the anthem protest. Watch this. There are lots of white players in the NFL, Stephen A., lots of them. You mean to tell me not a single one, none of their consciences tell them that, you know what, I actually agree with this protest? None of them do? Okay, fine. Let's say none of them do. Well, then the issue has become larger now. Now it's also an issue of solidarity with your, with your co-workers, right? So it was some of whom are feeling very bad about the way things are with your fellow Americans who are feeling very bad, the way all Americans right now of goodwill are very upset about recent events. Jason Whitlock is a commentator for Fox Sports 1, and he joins us now. So, Jason, here's what I don't understand. I, I get why people are mad about certain politicians or certain circumstances. I think it's entirely legitimate. But why is the way to express that attacking the country itself? I don't understand it myself, Tucker. And listen, Max Kellerman is a good friend of mine, of and mine I have a lot too. of respect for Max. But what I don't understand is Max is, under, is complaining, how come no one is supporting Colin Kaepernick? I want to know why NFL players aren't offering voices of dissent. There are NFL players, black and white, who know that if you really want to address police brutality, Right. Social injustice, inequality in this country. Protesting the national anthem is the perfect way for your message to get completely lost. Exactly. If Colin Kaepernick or any of these players, if you're a starting NFL quarterback, you have a huge platform and the opportunity to go on any TV, radio show you want, any newspaper, magazine article you want, and you can legitimately voice your complaints. If you protest during the national anthem, of course, there are going to be a massive amount of people that never hear a word you say, won't understand your message at all, and you can't tell me that there aren't NFL players who recognize the stupidity of the a style of protest Colin Kaepernick has, has chosen, but they're all afraid to say it because of the backlash. So, again, the cowardice or the real fear is stating your, the truth about the idiocy of what Kaepernick has done. That's where the backlash has come from, and people are afraid to voice that. There are a lot of really afraid people right now in this country, I would argue. How, so you follow this really closely. How true is it that protests like Kaepernick's have affected viewership of NFL games? I, I'm not sure. There's a lot of research on that that we've done here at Fox Sports that, that say, hey, mostly it was the election cycle or predominantly the election cycle that affected viewership. But I do think if these protests continue, I, I do think it's going to impact viewership because I think it's off-putting to the traditional sports fan who's like, they don't get this. You're protesting the national anthem what does that have to do? How is that the most effective way to get exactly. a point across about inequality in this America? It's not. And people's expectations when they go to sporting events, it's not for the event to be hijacked by politics. It's not for the event from the national anthem, from the beginning of the event, to have this kind of contention and, and problems. Sports have always been about bringing people together for a fun event. It's always been about racial unity and looking past your differences to achieve some athletic goal. Kaepernick has turned this thing into something else. I don't think it's effective for getting his message out. And no. I just don't think it's consistent with the principles of sports and what NFL football has been about as a television event. I think you're exactly right. I wanted to ask you about this. So you used to write for ESPN and then the Kansas City Star before that. There's a new piece at The Atlantic, Frank Ford, The New Republic wrote it. And he says that Silicon Valley has basically taken over journalism and is ruining it with a focus on sensationalist clickbait and maximizing traffic. ESPN seems to be doing its part because it's always fanning these feuds instead of covering sports. Do you think that's a fair critique? Do you think that Silicon Valley is affecting news coverage in a way that's bad? 
No question, Tucker. You and I talked about this yeah. several months ago, and I was very thrilled to see The Atlantic write this piece because I want the left side of the media to talk about this. Look, the media used to be obsessed with New York and New York liberal values. I think everybody understood that. Now it's dominated by Silicon Valley, Northern California, and San Francisco values. And that is a completely different animal. That's a revolutionary animal. That's an animal that really doesn't believe in this country. And so when you look at Google, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, in order to really be popular and, and to be represented in, in those spaces, the Silicon Valley spaces, you have to be extreme left wing. And they are trying yeah. to silence any of us that are moderate or to conservative. And those voices can't even be heard over these Silicon Valley social media machines that the rest of the media is addicted to. It's had an amazing influence on the media and the racial division that we're seeing in this country. And an undercovered one. And God bless you for bringing that up. I hope you'll come back. Jason Whitlock, one of the smartest. Appreciate it.